When it comes to bathroom renovations, you really want it to be just a set it and forget it type of deal because you don't want to be spending too much time going back to it. But when you're in a budget, there's sometimes things that you can do until you get to that end goal. So this, for example, is one bathroom that I did and I'm so happy. This is my um, whole, whole room bathroom and <laughs> I was cleaning. <laughs> I'm so glad that I finished it and it looks really nice and I love the whole feel but it's another story for the master bathroom so let me go show you over there. This bathroom is a whole nother story guys. We have a very old sink which is functional and it's good but my mom doesn't like it and this is the master bathroom as well and as you can tell the flow is kind of kind of off. There's only one sink as well instead of two vanities for the master bathroom um, unfortunately the shower stopped working so they ended up doing this or leaving it as kind of like a um it's a closet right now of things in spanish we call it chunches el cuarto de chunches because we just throw stuff in here and it just goes into the corner and here i'm saving up this high chair for my um, nephew's birthday that I did this craft if you haven't seen that video go ahead and check it out probably here on the right to see how I did all those crafts if you're interested in that kind of stuff but right here you can also see this bathtub is the catch-it-all we throw everything and anything in here that we feel like we're not gonna use or that we want to use but it's gonna be for later anyway this is a whole thing that we have to renovate and I want to do a whole bathroom remodel but at the moment we don't have the budget um, I don't have the time either and it's a whole deal to do this we did move the toilet where it was facing this way and there was a pony wall but not pony but a whole wall separating as you can tell I haven't finished this I only teared it down but um, you can tell that it's it's halfway done guys so um, right now we're focusing on the sink and we're gonna be redoing uh, the top part here it's just an easy update and a makeover because um, like I said we don't have the the budget right now to do anything major because this I want to move it completely to another area the sink and make it a double vanity and so what we're using today is something really easy budget friendly and it's contact paper. This is the contact paper that my mom chose. It's got like a marble color veining type and it's a little bit of gold there. It'll pair well with this. I might just give it a quick paint just to make it a little bit better and get it updated. So this is the video guys. We're doing the top part and I'll probably do the paint because it has to be done. So make it nice and pretty for my mom. And also because I have my sister, brother-in-law, and my little nephew coming to visit for his birthday, my little nephew's birthday. So it's just something where I want them to feel welcome and that although they're gonna have to use the other shower, they can still come here and, you know, use the sink and the toilet in this bathroom. So let's get started because we have no time to waste. Let's go. For any project, we're gonna have to do some cleanup. So my mom already got started a little bit here, but I have to clear the whole area to make it nice and clean and ready for the project. So other than that, I'm gonna be using my router. I'm gonna use a roundover bit that goes here on the edge because my mom doesn't want to have this edge where it's sharp, very square. We're gonna do a little bit more this I think it's gonna be this one here. It's a roundover bit, and it's gonna make it where we're gonna be able to put the the contact paper, flow it from here, and move it over, over here. So there you go. You might hear some screaming in the background while we do this because it's the um, men's US Open final, and my family is watching it right now while I'm doing this, but I'll sneak in to see what's happening in the major points when I hear that there's something happening.
Essentially what your router is, is a cutting tool that gives you really nice and different finishes for your wood pieces. And you're gonna be able to do, this one is for example, the roundover bit that I was showing you. Uh, but there's tons of different bits where you can do, um, the straight edge will do something like this, where it'll plunge into your piece and then you can do a type of rail, a little way in there, or it could be rounded, you could do like the dovetail or the roundover bits for the edges where you can do the roundover or you can do this one, which is more, what is it called? A cove, never used it, a cove or this more square one and there's tons more. But the one that I'm gonna be using today is the roundover bit. This is the 3 8 and it's the biggest that I have right now from the set. Um, I don't know if there's bigger, but this is what I'm going to use and let's see how it works. One of the things when you're doing this is, for example, you can tell here I am covered <laughs> in the sawdust. So use your mask. Um, I also use my headphone because the sound, it's very loud and I just want to keep my ears and for years to come. So always you use your protective gear and then I have my glasses to see what I'm doing. And then here because course I don't want all the dust is coming in my face because I have to be right up there looking at what I'm doing to see if, if it's worth it or not this is laminate so let let me show you so first impressions is that it stinks because the laminate when the blade goes in contact with the laminate it starts to burn it and it just really stinks <laughs> so but it is doing the the job you can tell there's a sharpness and then here is the rounding roundness um i wish it was a little bit um bigger the rounding that it does but this is the biggest that i have so what i'll do is i'll just file a little bit more here because i do see an edge that is not um kind of like in this part right here it kind of feathers it out but not on the top part it's more um more of like a a rougher cut but I'll do the rest and then we can do the the next step let me show you this this is where we're at right now so if you remember this edge is really rough and sharp over here so I just went back with my sanding my sander this is the Makita or orbital and I just went very lightly this I believe is an 80 grit but it's an old one so it's got the grit is a little bit uh, you know used so it might be equivalent to maybe like a hundred or 120 at this point and so I just went back and forth with my orbital and 
just round it up everything as smooth as possible and i still feel like a little step here here it's fine but the top part is where i still feel a step so i think i have to work it a little bit more so that when i put the contact paper i might even end up using some uh, bondo or wood filler here to finish it off and smooth it out but um, this is what i'm doing so far manager here inspecting <laughs> everything <laughs> So going forward, I'm going to paint as I yeah, already told you, I already cleaned all the walls. And another thing that I saw is, yeah, we definitely need to change this vanity because look at this. It's all broken. I had not noticed or maybe I didn't remember. I don't know, but definitely going to change the whole thing. And also the doors need to be change this whole area is gonna change so this is just like a quick makeover just to make it nice and pretty and i might have to take off the lights and we'll do something about the the mirror i think we have another mirror maybe we can add it so that we can have more uh, mirror on the wall these are the colors i think i'm gonna go with um this one is sorry <laughs> sorry about the whole so this one is a off -white, an off-white, it's a semi-gloss because it's a bathroom. You need something so that all the humidity doesn't stick to the walls and it seeps in. So semi-gloss is the way to go or, or gloss, but I feel like semi-gloss is a good option. This is off-white, uh, cotton knit is going to be for the cabinets down here. And then ultra pure white for... Um, I'm, I think I'm just going to go off-white all the way, even the trim. This trim is going to go out anyways, so that's going to be that. And if we haven't talked about the floors, those are going to go as well. Definitely needs an update, as you can tell. Let me tell you guys, I was really laughing when I was watching this video and editing because I know that it, this is all sped up, but I literally was painting that fast. I don't know how I did it, but this has been the fastest painting that I've ever done. And I think it helped that it was really hot that day. And I was able to go back and do the second coat, but definitely the fastest I've ever worked. Once the first coat for the walls was done, I started going for the vanity and I took out all of the hardware and started painting and then just realized that I, at the same time, I needed to organize inside of the drawers and the inside of the cabinet there was almost organized. I just took out everything that was not in use. And I thought that I could paint everything together with the doors on, but then decided to take everything out and just do it the right way. I painted the face frame first and then went for the doors outside. So I already painted the wall on this area over here and as you can tell it is a huge difference, so much different, I think I'm still sweating. <laughs> it was such a hot, hot day and very very humid, it's kind of crazy how we've had these um, weather like this where it gets really muggy, it's kind of like Florida. Um, so you can tell here the difference between the color. It's a yellow on this side. Here is the original. And now I'm doing the white because it just opens up the area so much more. Look at the difference in the vanity. Amazing. I still have to do the toe kick. So gotta remember that because I always forget to do those kind of things. Um, 
And then I'm gonna do something with the mirror, gonna paint the lights, replace the bulbs, and make it much, much nicer. I'm gonna try to see if I can do the contact paper today. So the first thing that you have to do is clean the area very well and just take off any grease or any type of dirt, dust, whatever you have. You have to clean it really well so that the contact paper can stick to the surface. And another step that I do is that I use alcohol and I have it in a little bottle that sprays and I already sprayed the whole area uh, everywhere so that it can be completely uh, free of dust and any grease. So we're gonna start by cutting here. I'm gonna open this. Okay, so I opened it and it's very interesting. I've worked with other contact papers that have been a little bit more shiny and I thought it was gonna be the same but we'll see we'll see what happens um then the other thing is um which i think which i think is a good thing is that it's thick it feels thick and that it's going to be nice and durable so for the meantime it's going to be good and i'm just having here to figure out how i'm going to lay it on the on the surface here because we do have the sink and that part we need to figure out how to cut it. I don't know if I'll start here from the side and then cut out here or cut out here, here in the middle almost, kind of in the middle, but I don't want to waste so much paper from here to, to do this part. And then we just end up doing this side. So definitely have to figure that out. I haven't thought about that. I think I figured it out. So so that I don't waste so much paper, I'm just gonna grab paper here, just like this width over here. And then when I, and then cut this whole area, the roundness here, and then do the same for the back. Once I have this middle part done, then I can just move over to the side and cut this part here. And then we're gonna have a little piece here that I'll just do on the side at the end. And the same for the other side. And we'll figure out this top part, which I think is gonna be not as easy, but it's gonna be, I don't know if I should go all the way from the top, Probably I should just do that. Go from the top down just to not have to cut so many times and just do it in one full swing. Yes, that way I can match everything and I don't have to, you know, stress out about matching the top with the bottom and all that. So I think that's the plan. The first thing that I wanted to show you now that I'm already installing this, I realized that I should have put some lines and be more centered, but that, that'll that work okay because I still have the, the material where I can match and make it seamless. And the thing that I'm noticing with this material, it's a little bit thicker, but it can crack or you could say, yeah, crack at the seams. So you have to be careful when you bend it so that it doesn't break and you'll have like a hole. And once I cut it here, um, I cut it here short. I went with my X-Acto knife all around where it was almost around here is where I started cutting so that I could do this shape of the sink right there. And I won't be short. Like here, I was a little bit short. But I think I can go with a cock all around and just mimic, you know, the actual stone or tile. And it'll be fine. 
Um, another thing that I see is a little bit of this coming through. So I don't know if I should paint it first, this part, because I can see it just a tad bit. I know this is not going to be permanent, but it's just going to, I'm going to know. So I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm going to finish this part, but we'll see. Another thing is I have this, which is going to help me smooth out all of these areas as I go. I can lift it a little bit and make it more tight and there's no air bubbles whatsoever. And and then I can go back once I get, hit this area where I can't go anymore. Um, I'll go back and just do the razor cutting right there because I am going to be doing the caulking. And that way I don't have any holes or gaps in between because then the water will come in and then this will go out, pop out and <laughs> it's going to be a whole deal. Another thing that I wanted to mention is right here because I was telling you that this, I guess the description would be that it's brittle. It's thick, but it's brittle, and if it encounters a sharp edge like this one, I'm not sure if it's gonna if it's gonna break. Uh, I guess not. <sighs> okay, I like it. So I will go ahead and do the full full covering from the top to over here, so that I don't have to break or do anything like that and find a matching color. This turn that we have to do, um, it's very important if you're going, what I, if you're doing the same thing that I'm gonna be doing, which is gonna be doing a complete um, full swoop from the top to everywhere, is that uh, once you get to this corner, you have to pull your paper down where you're going to, I'm gonna pull your paper down like this. And then with your flattening tool, you're going to go and get in there and get into that corner and start getting the corner really close, the paper really close to the corner as much as possible and just tucking it in so that you can do that, that turn. Because otherwise you'll be left with a kind of... Um, you will have a nice turn and it'll it'll look it'll look ugly plus um i think we're gonna do the the caulking but still um i just wanted it to go really really close so that you can do your nice turns uh, up to the top there you go you can tell here how i did the cutting on the on the sink and I'll do the caulking because definitely it needs the caulking so that the water doesn't go underneath. And it's looking good. This is, oh my gosh, I turned it off. Okay, this is how it's looking so far. Doesn't that look so much different? Whoa. This part behind the sink was one of the hardest ones because you were just doing everything, you could say, upside down. 
So I had to be careful not to cut over uh, or shorter than I needed to, otherwise I would mess it up. So I was lifting and I was trying to tuck everything in as much as possible to the, to the seam and then go over with my X-Acto knife and cut to size. As I mentioned before, I also went in with my X-Acto knife and cut that seam so that I could seal it and finish it off with a caulking. I also had to cut a small triangle there because I didn't cut it long enough. Thankfully, I was able to blend it in and you can't even notice it. So this is the mid reveal. I ran out of product, so I have to get more contact for the sides. But isn't that just such a difference? The one tip that I would say is just do the caulking, the old caulking, try to get it off from the, from the sink because I had old caulking and I had to start removing it as I was going and it's such a pain because it got into the, into the paper on the seam and then I was just afraid that it wouldn't stick anymore. So that's one thing to do because the caulking was a nasty here. So do that if you have that. And in any corners, if you have old caulking that is like protruding, sticking out, just clean it all off. That way you'll have a nice seamless thing. And then you'll come back with more caulking, new caulking, and finish it off so that you don't have any leaking underneath the paper. And then it'll start peeling off and then your work is all done. So definitely I think it's worth it for so far and we'll finish and show you how it ends up looking. So other than being incredibly humid here today, I don't know what's going on with California. It became tropical after Hurricane Hillary and the storm came through. Other than that, I'm just painting the cabinet doors or the vanity doors for the, for the bathroom. And I'm not doing a great detail on these. The only thing I did was I cleaned them and then I started putting the first coat as a primer. And now I'm just finishing them off. I'm going to do the rest of the drawers. Before we do any painting for these drawers, we're going to do some organization. So I just felt like this whole wall right here at this point didn't have enough mirror in it. <laughs> So I went and got some Ikea mirrors that I had. I know that I had three, but for some reason I can only find two. I don't know if one broke or what when we have moved. Probably something happened, but I'm going to try to do this. If I don't do this, I'm going to move the mirror that's here by the, by the bathtub, the big one, over here. The overall length is 54 inches width. And that other mirror, the one that's, uh, well, you can't see right now, but the ones behind me, it's uh, 40 inches. So I think it'll cover well, but I don't know what to do right now. Move this one, which is so big and it's stuck to the wall, or try to work with this, which the middle one is also stuck to the wall and I would have to lift it somehow to make it work. Do you think this works? I don't know. Who knew that DIY was going to be so exhilarating? My heart is pounding right now. Um, well, I know because I've done this quite a couple of times and I've had <laughs> a few scares. But uh, I was doing the mirror and I was able to take it off. The bummer is that right here it broke because I tried to pry it out of this little aluminum thing. And it broke off there. That's when my heart started <laughs> just to to race and then I was able to do it with this piece of aluminum because it had to go I had to go behind it I think you can see it there it's a piece of glue right there and it's in the middle I had to do this with the other mirror in the other bathroom so I kind of knew where this whole thing was going and so there's that piece of glue super strong I want to know what kind of glue that is but anyways I'm gonna have to uninstall the mirror here from this aluminum um, and I guess one tip that I can tell you about this uninstalling of the mirrors is just put some tape across so that in case it breaks it won't go 
all over the place in pieces. Um, it'll go in less pieces to the ground. <laughs> and another thing that I did is, because I don't have anybody else with me right now, um, I have the pieces of tape. As you can see, I gave them a little bit of leeway so that they can hold on in case the, the mirror would go forward and it did and I was like oh how am I gonna catch it and then the tape did the the job so really good tape love it I just took off the the mirror it wasn't that crazy to take it off I just lifted it um, now I have to get rid of this and fix the wall oh god I'm getting into more <laughs> more trouble than I should um, as you can see it's double-sided tape that's the type of uh, glue that this has so I'm gonna get rid of this and now it had three pieces. There's two pieces behind this mirror. I'm gonna have to paint the wall right there and keep going. I did some mock-ups so that I could see the different types of ways that I could put the three mirrors and work with them, but none of them looked good. So I just decided to go and take off the big mirror from the other side of the bathroom and hope for the best okay guys so it was super scary to do the first mirror but this one is even more scary because this is huge it's a four by almost four here so what i'm doing if you can tell this is my aluminum uh, piece that i'm getting in there to undo the the backing which is the double tape and this time I'm going to be using my hair dryer. Well, it's not my, my mom's. <laughs> and uh, I really don't use a hair dryer because look at my hair. Uh, so I'm going to use it and try to get off, um, at least get it more unsticky. And then I can put the pry bar here that I'm using and hopefully get it out. I do see that it's not, well, it, it still was stuck. So we're going to try to do this. Do a little prayer for me because this is very scary. I used a combination of my hair dryer and a ruler which is thin enough. I didn't use the other piece of aluminum because it was bending too much. And so wherever my ruler would hit something, I would heat it up and then keep pushing in so that I could get rid of that um, tape. I had done the same thing of putting tapes all around so that it could catch the mirror but oh my god I was so scared I should have gotten another person to help me and don't ever do this all by yourself guys I was really lucky I do not want to do that ever again because it's very scary to see the mirror come at you and you don't know if you're going to be able to catch it or not. But unbelievably, here is the mirror in one piece, thank god, and now we're going to put it here uh, horizontally. So what I'm going to be doing with this as far as a frame, I think I'm just going to do a piece of wood, like a one by 2 um, and it's going to be along the bottom and the top. So I took down the fixture, just the part here that is uh, the, the front and these little guys. Um, so I'm just going to paint them. It's going to be an easy enough job. I don't have to move the lights or anything because I'm planning to leave them in the same spot. And this is going to be painted next. This is a much needed towel hanger in my parents' bathroom. But I'm going to spray paint it because I don't like the color that it is right now. It doesn't really look um, the color through the screen, but it gives a more orangey feel to it. And when I put it inside, uh, the wallpaper, not the wallpaper, the contact paper on the on the countertop looks very orangey. So I'm gonna do it a little bit more champagne and I'll also spray paint the vanity handles to match so that everything matches. This here is my painting station and I'm spray painting everything that needs to be 
coated, which is the towel hanger, the handles, and the light fixture. So I think it looks really good. Now I have to go look inside and see how it all looks together. Um, but for the towel hanger and the handles, I'm gonna be doing a clear coat because we're gonna be handling them and just using them all the time. And if not, I've had experience where if I don't do that coat, everything starts to peel off and just kind of like, it looks ugly. <laughs> just waiting for it to, to dry a little bit more and then I can do the last coat. But it looks really good right now. I'm happy. We're gonna find the studs to see where I'm gonna be attaching the pieces of wood. So um, what I use is this, it's a stud finder. I'm gonna link it in the description below. This is a pretty good one, it's small and it has even a level here. So it's supposed to be every 16 inches that they put the studs or 12 inches, I think this one is every 16 so there you go we found one so I'm gonna put my little X here and then we're gonna see where the next one is I'll find them about to spray paint and for some reason I can't say that word so um, we're going to the spray painting station and I'm doing the last bits of spray painting which is for the trim for the mirror and I also have some bits uh, there for the light fixture so here's my tips when you're doing any spray painting in the metallic range do uh, a, a coat of primer in white and that's going to help your spray paint go the color pop otherwise it'll take more material and it'll look dark and it won't look vibrant like you want it to be so definitely do that white primer first it's going to make all the difference in the world another tip is this is for my light fixtures um where the bulbs uh, light bulbs go these have some information here of the watts that it needs all that stuff i like to uh, cover it and then spray paint it and just make sure that the next person that's going to be uh, using this you know in the uh, in the future is going to know how many watts the the light fixture needs so very important i like to do that because i've run into some fixtures that you don't even know what you can put on the on the wattage you know like the maximum so very important this one is actually 60 watts if you wanted to know. Super messy right now and I would like to finish today. It's been three days and uh, what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start putting all the handles, putting the light fixture and I think I might have to move it either to the right or the left I don't know which one was off center, either the mirror or the light fixture. So I'll figure that out right now and I'll fix it. And then I'm putting on the mirror. Um, I'm waiting on the material to come in today. So I think it's coming in today. And hmm, I don't know what else, but I think it's looking way, way better. Just the color itself has changed dramatically here. You can't really tell inside here. It brightens up the whole space actually so for bathrooms I would always recommend a light bright color on the cooler side because if you do yellow oh here is where you can tell more if you do yellow colors it just everything looks so icky really <laughs> I'm gonna leave this like this because I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna do anything to that I'm just gonna be let it be
this is how much I used. It was almost halfway. So I would say, what, one eighth? And I painted the whole cabinet. Doors, back and front, and the bottom. Fresh out of the oven, AKA the sun. I did have to put some clear on these. I didn't put the clear on this one, but I should have. But I had already mounted it, so there you go. I think it'll be fine once it finished curing, but for right now, looking, looking good. These right here are a bunch of holes that I had to do in order to find the stud because usually it's every 12 inches stud to stud, but this time it was 24 inches. I have one stud over here. Here's the wall, the corner. And there's one here, I found it at 12, but then I tried here and another 12 and it's not here. Tried further, nothing, until I found one over here. That's kind of crazy and then I couldn't find anything anymore. So I have two studs to work with to secure my mirror and that's what I'm gonna have to use because I guess four is enough. Four at the bottom, I mean two at the bottom and two at the top. Mounting time. This is gonna be the frame, the bottom part of the frame. And then I'm gonna do a top part, which is this one over here. So I'm trying to give the effect of maybe the mirror being just held by the two things. So kind of like a floating effect. Right here is the other piece. And as you can tell, it has the routing. I did some routing on the piece. I think this is probably like half an inch by half an inch, something like that, or three quarters of an inch. Here, this is where the mirror is gonna sit. And then I'm gonna be able to go through this part, the part that is not uh, routed. So through this part, I'm going to be able to go in with my drill and put in my screws so that everything can be secured. The mirror is installed, and as you can tell, everything is there. I didn't videotape it because my brother doesn't like to be on camera, and he helped me because I couldn't do it by myself. So the first thing that I did was put the bottom rail there and attached it with the nail, the nails, with the screws. And once I was there, he helped me to put it into the slot that I had prepared over here. And when that was there, I put some double-sided tape pieces in the three, um, two in the corners and then in the middle and then one on the top. I think that should be sufficient. And then the top part, um, I put the rail and then installed it um, with the screws as well. When I was drilling, I messed up the contact paper here, so that's a bummer. We'll see if I can cover it with the stuff that's going to go here on top. But I think everything's looking really good. So this is the most critical part, uh, which is all the edges and the side over here. What I ended up doing was that... So let me just show you here. On this side, this is how it's looking. I'm going to be putting the caulking, so all these, um, this part over here that you see is going to be covered, so is this, and here too, and I'm going to be putting some staples underneath so that it can stick because it kind of like unfolds. What we were looking at here is I have this um, type of little wall coming up, and what I did is I just did a piece where it's wide enough to cover here and fold over and go this way. Then on this side, the end, I cut it long because I am going to put it so that it can cover all the way over here to the very end of the edge. 
and then I'll just do a strip on this part to go along and and there now this part over here I'm still trying to figure out because on this part I had to do it by little pieces but I think it's gonna be okay once you put the caulking you won't even notice it and this is how it's all looking we're almost there I just have to finish this tonight and we are done ready for the reveal Okay friends, so on top of the bad linoleum that we had there that I cut and then I stapled, um, I put this rug, I also stapled it so that if anybody comes in or out, we won't be able to rip the linoleum again until we're able to get the, the floor done, which is gonna be until we're able to finish the rest of the bathroom. <laughs> so right here, I just wanted to show you, I ended up painting and I'm gonna try to see if I have enough in this can to finish this whole wall. Whatever I have left, I'm just gonna use up. Hopefully it'll um, be enough to finish right here and see where it takes me. And I cleaned up. Look at that, looks amazing. <laughs> and uh, also we had to leave everything here. Um, it's toys and things like that, that we're just gonna see if my sister wants for her uh, for my nephew for um for them and the rest we're gonna donate and then we have some other stuff this shower i think i never told you but the shower um started leaking and then uh we got a plumber here but he said that there was something with the plumbing the tubing all that stuff that is uh, older so we would have to replace the whole thing and we haven't had, you know, a chance to get into that project. Um, uh, definitely a plumber will have to do that. But for right now, we're just going to leave it as is and then clean up here, finish this whole thing. And then I'll do the reveal that's right behind me. And I'm really excited to show you. By the way, this is how much I have. This is how much I have in the paint can. So it's just the end so I'm just gonna finish it that way um, it doesn't dry up and I'll use it for something really really good well guys I might not be all glammed up but this bathroom sure is so let me show you how it's looking I just finished painting and finishing the can of paint that I had for wherever I could reach uh, my last bit of paint so let me show you this main vanity, which is the one that we did. I'm so excited. You guys, I am so happy that I was able to do this makeover for my mom and also for my sister and her family because I had been leaving this project for the end of the list. 
as you can see here i organized a little bit i am not the best organizer where everything looks super perfect but i am going to tell my mom to do that because she is the best at that I was able to paint inside of those doors. I didn't paint the other door because it had that patch and I didn't want to deal with that. But I wanted to mention that I saved so much money with this makeover because I had material from other projects and I reused many things that I already had, like the light fixture, the vanity, moved the big mirror, and then I had stuff like the glass shelf and a towel holder and I just DIY'd my way through the rest of the makeover. And here's the breakdown of what I spent in total, $67.92, give or take. But this is less than $100, guys. Can you believe this? And it took me four days, which is about two weekends, to make all of this. And I made this almost all by myself. Yes, it was intense and it did take blood, a lot of sweat and tears, but the payoff is so worth it. My mom is thrilled, my sister enjoyed it and felt pampered as well. And this will carry us through until the big renovation is done.